In this video, we're going to complete example one. It says, for the activity network below, write down the earliest start times and latest start times in the appropriate spaces below. It then says, what is the earliest time frame for the project to be completed? You might have noticed when looking at the activity network below that every vertex has two squares next to it. The square at the left is used for the earliest start time and the square on the right is used for the latest start time. The way we represent earliest start times and latest start times differs depending on who drew up the activity network. I don't actually like to have the two squares next to the vertex. I prefer it like this. I prefer to have the two squares in place of the vertex. And I use the square at top as the earliest start time and the square at the bottom as the latest start time. So I'm going to actually use this diagram to complete example one. We're going to start by filling in our earliest start times and we're going to use a method called forward scanning. And you might notice that I've written use the biggest number. We'll talk about that as we go. Now you'll notice that every edge has a weight, such as activity A has a weight of 5, activity E has a weight of 7, and this represents a time frame. Now we don't know if activity A is 5 hours or 5 minutes or 5 days, so just out of convenience we'll just refer to them as hours. We'll say that this is 5 hours. Anyway, we have our start vertex here, and our earliest start time goes at the top, and that's going to be zero. Because at the very beginning of our project, we want people to start straight away, or start zero hours after the project has started. Then when we look at activity A, we can see that this takes five hours to complete. So by the end of activity A, the earliest start time for the next activity is 5. The activities that come after this point cannot start until 5 hours have passed, until activity A has had time to complete. Looking at activity B, this takes 3 hours to complete. So by the completion of activity B, we have an earliest start time of 3, meaning that any activities that come out from this point need to wait at least three hours before they can start. So let's look at this vertex here. Let's find the earliest start time to go in this square. And we're kind of faced with a bit of an issue because there's two different ways to get to this vertex. We could go through activities B, then C, or we could go through activity A and then through the dummy activity. So we'll start with going through activities B, then C. Activity B takes three hours, and Activity C takes four hours. That gives us an earliest start time of seven. Three plus four is seven. What if we went the other way? What if we went through Activities A and then the dummy activity? We've got five hours and then zero. Five plus zero is five, giving us an earliest start time of five. Now, which number do we put as the earliest start time, 5 or 7? I mentioned earlier that the method we are using is called forward scanning. We call it forward scanning because we start at the start and we move forward to the finish. And I wrote a little note, use the biggest number. So out of 5 and 7, we're going to use the 7. Why do you think we need to use the biggest number? Well, if we look at activity F, we now know that it has an earliest start time of 7. Why 7? Well, there's two paths you can take to get to this vertex. You could go through edge A, then the dummy activity, or you could go through edge B, then edge C. In order for activity F to start, we need to make sure that activities A, B, and C are all complete before activity F can start. Now, if we were to start five hours into the project, activity A would be complete. Activity B would also be complete, but we'd only be halfway through activity C. 
So it's important to pick the bigger number to ensure that all the required activities are complete before activity F can start. Let's look at this vertex now. What's the earliest start time here? Well, we know that activity D takes six hours and that activity D cannot start until three hours have passed. So three plus six gives us nine. All right, now we're going to look at this vertex and we can see we've got three edges coming in here. So there's quite a few different paths that we can take. We've got edge E that takes seven hours and cannot start until five hours have passed. So five plus seven gives us 12. So we've got an earliest start time of 12. We also have activity F, which takes three hours to complete. Activity F cannot start until seven hours has passed. Seven plus three is 10. So we have an earliest start time of 10. We also have activity G, which takes four hours to complete. Activity G cannot start until nine hours has passed. Nine plus four is 13. So we get an earliest start time of 13. And as we mentioned earlier, we take the biggest or largest number, which is 13. And finally, we come to our finished vertex. We can see that activity H takes two hours and cannot start until 13 hours has passed. 13 plus two is 15. Now we need to move on to our latest start time. When you have your finishing vertex, it will have the same earliest start time as its latest start time. So we're going to use a method that's called backward scanning. You start at the finish vertex and work backwards until you get to the start vertex. We can see that we want the project to finish after 15 hours and activity H takes two hours to complete. What is the latest start time that we can have here so that we have time to complete activity H, which is two hours, and then finish the project within 15 hours? Well, it's going to be 13. 15 minus 2 gives us 13. And this makes sense because if we start activity H any later than 13 hours, we're going to delay the project. Let's now look at this vertex. What's the latest start time here? Well, we know that activity G takes four hours to complete. And the latest start time for the next activity is 13. So 13 minus 4 gives us 9. This makes sense because the latest that Activity G can start is 9 hours into the project. So that after 4 hours of completing the activity, we're at 13 hours, which is just enough time for Activity H to start to ensure that the project is not delayed. Let's now look at this vertex. 13 minus 3 gives us 10. If activity F started at the latest start time of 10, it will have just enough time to complete the activity in three hours so that the next activity can start 13 hours into the project. You can see that activity F has this three hour window. It can start as early as seven hours into the project or as late as 10 hours in the project. Let's now look at this vertex. There are actually two different paths we can take to get to this vertex. We could go along this path or we could go along this path. Nine minus six gives us three. So we have a possible latest start time of three. The other path we can take is 10 minus four, which gives us six. So we could also have a latest start time of six. We are told with backward scanning to use the smallest number. So we're going to use three as our latest start time. So why do we use the smaller number? Why do we use the three instead of the six? Well, just imagine what would happen if we had put a six here. Six plus four would have given us 10, 
that works quite fine, but 6 plus 6 would have given us 12 here instead of 9, and putting 12 here would have delayed the project beyond the 15 hour mark. Let's now look at this vertex. There are two paths we can take to get to this vertex using backward scanning. We could go this way, or we could go along this path. 13 minus 7 gives us 6, so we have a latest start time of 6. And the other option, 10 minus 0, gives us 10. So we also have a latest start time of 10. Once again, we use the smallest number, so we're going to use the 6. Finally, let's look at our start vertex. We could either have 6 minus 5, which is 1, or 3 minus 3, which is 0. Once again, we use the smallest number. And you'll always find that the start vertex will have a 0 for both the earliest and latest start time. The start vertex and the finish vertex will always have an earliest and latest start time that is the same. All right, we need to answer the next part of the question. It just says, what is the earliest time frame for the project to be completed? We can see that on our finish vertex, which is 15 hours. Now, you might remember it's actually not hours. Well, we don't know what it is. Well, so we'll write it as 15 units of time because it could be days, it could be minutes, it could be seconds, it could be anything. Now before we finish I want to talk a little bit about these network diagrams and how we display earliest and latest start time because it doesn't always look the same. So I'm going to show you a, a few different methods that people use. So I've seen examples where they have a circle in place of the vertex where the top represents the earliest start time and the bottom represents the latest start time. I've seen it where they use a square and a triangle and they put a square below the vertex for latest start time and they put a triangle above the vertex for earliest start time. There's lots of different varieties out there. All you really need to remember is that the top will be the earliest start time and the bottom will be the latest start time or if you've got a left and right the left will be the earliest start time and the right will be the latest start time. Anyway that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.